All right, I'm going to kick things off here. Um, as people continue to be admitted, I'm just going to go through a few housekeeping things. But um, first and foremost, good morning, everyone. My name is Tommy Johnson. I'm with the Portland Regional Chamber of Commerce. Welcome back to our 2021-22 season of Eaton Peabody's Growth Basics for Business. This is our monthly breakfast seminar series, which provides a forum to gain useful do-it-yourself workplace solutions and insightful, actionable tips. Um, now, at the conclusion of the 2020-21 event season, we look back at the tremendous success we had from the past year and a half. The overwhelming response, participation, and reach of our virtual growth basics allowed us to make the easy decision to keep the event series virtual. And then based on today's registered attendance and interest, we made the correct decision. Now, today's topic, Market Smarter, Building an Actionable Marketing Roadmap, is presented by Peter Anania and Dustin Bailey of Anania Bailey, as well as Jacques Santucci, president of Opus Consulting. We're very fortunate to have them with us today. Now, like all Chamber virtual signature events, today's presentation is free and will be recorded and made available for free replay on the Chamber's website and YouTube page. To keep up to date on all Chamber news and events, please visit our website, portlandregion.com. Check out our events page and sign up for our weekly events newsletter while you're there. Now, before we get to today's presentation, I'd like to remind you that if you have questions for our presenters, please type them in the Zoom chat and I will relay them to our presenters at the conclusion of the event. There will be time for them to answer some of your questions. We've already allotted that. At this point, I'd like to acknowledge our presenting sponsor of Growth Basics for Business, Eaton Peabody. For the past four years, Eaton Peabody has been the exclusive sponsor of the series uh, until this year when we've actually brought on our friends at Anania Bailey. Uh, but at this time, I would like to introduce marketing manager, Nate Levesque to say a few words. Nate? There we go. Perfect. So having an issue with unmuting. Uh, thank you, Tommy. Um, I can't believe that this is the start of our fourth season. Um, I want to thank the Portland Chamber for doing a great job of putting these together and providing new and engaging content every single month. So whether this is your first Growth Basics event or your 10th, uh, I wanna thank you for taking the time to join us uh, today. For those of you that may not be familiar with Eaton Peabody, we are a full service main base law firm with nearly 50 attorneys serving main clients from offices in Augusta, Bangor, Brunswick, Ellsworth, and Portland. We assist companies of all sizes in many different industries. So whether you're an established financial institution or a small business just taking your first steps, we can help with all your legal needs. To learn more about the services that we provide and the industries that we serve, please visit our website, eatonpeabody.com. Also be sure to follow us on Facebook or LinkedIn. Um, you'll find that we provide a lot of legal updates and also future presentations. Uh, thank you very much. Back to you, Tommy. Thanks, Nate. And without further ado, I'm pleased to introduce our panel of presenters. Uh, first, Peter Anania. He's a partner at Anania Bailey, a branding and advertising firm based out of Westbrook. He's worked with marketing, uh, the marketing world for over a decade and has worked with some of Maine's largest organizations. With a master's in business from University of Southern Maine, Peter lends his experience to complex branding and advertising projects from across a variety of industries, including education, hospitality, manufacturing, commercial construction, financial institutions, telecommunications, and retail. Uh, Dustin Bailey is also a partner at Anania Bailey. Again, he helps manage the team at Anania Bailey, overseeing all branding and advertising efforts for clients. Dustin serves on the board of the Maine Public Relations Council, lives in Westbrook, and has a passion for the Maine craft beer scene, having explored the industry with articles in various publications. Dustin has worked on branding projects and advertising campaigns ranging from education to manufacturing, and from commercial construction to retail and beyond. And we have Jacques Santucci, the president of Opus Consulting, a business performance consulting group with a cross-functional approach to performance management. He has years of leadership experience in the entertainment, tourism, financial services, and technology industries. His expertise lies within business strategy and management, new business ventures, due diligence, accounting, process improvement, financial systems, planning, and analysis. Please welcome our presenters. Thank you so much, Tommy. Uh, we're, we're very happy to be here and, you know, we appreciate every, everything the chamber does. And uh, if anyone's not uh, part of the chamber yet on here, recommend that uh, you join. Um, I'm actually on the Westbrook chamber on the board, as well as uh, trying to become more active in the Portland regional chamber. 
Um, so kind of dig in here, because I know <clears throat> we are a little limited on, on time with such a big topic, but we know we have a variety of people on this webinar. I think we had you know, 115 people sign up, which was, which was great. Um, so we really tried to make this presentation fit everyone. Um, but if you are a larger business, you know, the scope of this marketing roadmap that we're recommending might change a little bit. And, and our goal here is not just to educate, but to, to motivate everyone here because we're, we're finding ourselves in September. So now really is the perfect time to start planning for 2022. Um, so it's a good thing that you're here. And we're going to be covering three topics. And the first is we're going to talk about how do you, um, and the three topics are, are around marketing strategy, but the first place we suggest you start is conducting a kickoff meeting or a, a strategy session. And then the next is the key elements of building a marketing roadmap. And then once you have your marketing roadmap built, how are you going to refine uh, and report on the success of it over time? So one thing we like to do when we have webinars is kind of ask, where, where's everyone at? And you can type into chat, uh, red, yellow, green. Are you red where you're maybe in your, your first marketing job, uh, just getting into building marketing plans? Are you yellow where you've done a couple, but um, you know, you're looking to, to learn a couple more things? Or are you green where you're that, that industry veteran, which can add a lot to this conversation? So uh, don't be shy and just put red, yellow, green right in the chat uh, right now. While you guys are doing that, we have some resources available for you. If you go to ananiabailey.com forward slash roadmap, we have the presentation there. Um, so um, you can access that after. We also have our marketing strategy template. We have it so you make a copy so that you can then go in and start working on your marketing strategy. Um, this is a, a template that we've built here in-house. And then we also have the kickoff questionnaire. Um, and you will have to, again, make a copy of that, but uh, it's, it's going to be a great resource and you can start going and filling it out. Um, also on that page is our contact information as well as Jacques as well. So Jacques, I'm going to kick this over to you. I know you've done a lot of strategy sessions, a lot of kickoff meetings, a lot of, a lot of brainstorming sessions. So I kind of want you to set the stage. You know, why is this an important part of the process and, and why is it, you know, really the, the first step in building a marketing plan? Yeah, thanks, Peter. And uh, good morning, everybody. I'm Jacques Santucci, the president of uh, Opus Consulting. And when I was uh, listening to our bios, you know, our three bios, I was like, that's a roadmap right there. That's a strategy roadmap. How did we get there? Because we're not talking about, you know, me not raising chicken, right? We're only talking about business. And that's kind of a marketing strategy on its own. And how did I get to that uh, bio is really just by having a kickoff meeting somewhere, somehow thinking about, hey, what am I trying to do here? And, and what's my goal? So the importance of that kickoff meeting is just there. It's the minute where you're like, I need a marketing strategy. I need a business strategy. I need a business plan. And uh, how am I going to get there? So um, during that kickoff meeting, you know, we do it at Opus. I know you, you, you guys doing it too. Um, it's the importance of connecting all the dots and then trying to put on paper or, or kind of formalizing all the ideas initially. Who are the stakeholders? What's the timeline? What's my budget? Um, what am I trying to achieve overall? And we're going to talk about that in, in a few seconds, but also have a way to get everybody involved around me, you know, different departments. I think the major one is who's the decision maker? You know, it's always good to think about, I'm going to have a business strategy or a marketing strategy, but who's making the decision at the end? So during that uh, kickoff meeting, that's what we're trying to achieve, you know, understanding the goals and agree on the scope, agree on the goals and, and, and who's going to make the final decision. Absolutely. And um, there we go. Um, and so the kickoff meeting, what we suggest is, as Jacques said, it's really, you want to involve all the decision makers within the company. You want to get them all in the room. And it, maybe it's so overwhelming. Sometimes, Jacques, actually, we have multiple kickoff meetings if it's a larger company. Uh, and I know I'm, I'm very guessing at Opus, you guys do that too. Or if you're working with a larger organization, yes. you'll be meeting with a different department uh, independently. Yeah. Um, well, you, if, if I may interrupt, we, 
we, you know, in every business transaction, there's two people, you know, usually that are the decision maker. That's right there, uh, kickoff meeting. And then, as you correct, depending on the size of the project, the scope, the organization, you have multiple kickoff meetings just to get the buy-in from everybody in the organization or in the project or or whatever the the, the kickoff the strategy is for. Absolutely. And so the, the kickoff meeting, it's, it's really a discussion uh, going through all the items you're going to need in, in the marketing strategy. And, you know, here's one tip that we say with a kickoff meeting, this is easy. If you know how to record audio on your phone or you know how to use Zoom, uh, then, then you're already set with this one. And it's, it's record the audio of this kickoff meeting um, you have with your organization. Because when you're doing this kickoff meeting, you want to be engaged um, as a team and you want to be going through the questions similar to what we have in, in the questionnaire we're providing. Um, and you don't want to be worrying about taking every single little note. So record the kickoff meeting so then you can go back and replay it. And you want to provide all the, the, the people who are going to be in the kickoff meeting with the questionnaire ahead, ahead of time. And as Dustin, I know he knows this, sometimes people we're trying to get in this initial kickoff meeting are extremely busy. So don't hand them this questionnaire with about 60 questions in it. And if they're, if they're short on time, don't expect them to, to fill out every single question. Let them know that the questionnaire is merely meant to guide the actual discussion. And if they don't have time, they don't have to fill out every single uh, little question on there. But um, this is something Dustin told me as we we're prepping for this is if there's even obvious questions that you're going through as a business during this quick off kickoff meeting, you know, go through the obvious questions, put them down on paper. Cause just the exercise of going through these questions is, um, is, is extremely helpful putting them on paper because there might be something that in one department, it's very important to someone that might not be obvious to the organization as a whole. Um, so, you know, do the work, go through the fundamentals, go through all the questions, even if they seem uh, obvious um, and don't leave any stone unturned. But the sections, and you'll see this in the questionnaire within the, this uh, the kickoff meeting is the organization overview, um, going through kind of organization at a high level, um, your target audience, and that's sort of your, your customer base and any other demographics you're wishing to target. And then positioning, you know, and that what's your points of differentiation and, and messaging, uh, branding and design. And that's looking at your current, current brand and marketing materials and, and evaluating, you know, kind of where they're at. And as well as your online presence, you know, is your website driving results and what are the, the core calls to action that should be on it? And then evaluating where you're at with your current marketing efforts. So those are uh, the major steps of the kickoff meeting. Um, after, you know, here's some, some more big tips. Building a marketing strategy is, ex is extremely overwhelming. So when Dustin and I are doing it, uh, we like to, to make it easy on ourselves because it can be overwhelming. And we suggest that you do this as well. So we told you to record the audio of this kickoff meeting. Use a service online that's going to get it transcribed. Um, it's just going to, you know, be one less thing that you have to do. Um, and it's going to be very useful when you're doing the next steps. And after the kickoff meeting, we recommend creating some kickoff meeting minutes and <clears throat> then sending those around to all the stakeholders. And this is just going to make sure, Hey, did we miss anything here? Is there anything that, that needs to be added or, um, anything else that we need to consider? Um, and Dustin, I know you you find the meeting minutes extremely important, and and sometimes we send them around, and people say, "Oh, actually, we we forgot this part." Yeah, and I think you know it, when when we're talking about this, it, it, we we mentioned you know some people, some stakeholders, and especially you know uh, some decision makers, as Jacques put it, um, you know don't have the time to be fully invested in this meeting or only be able to attend it for a certain X amount of time. So it's really good to be able to present them like, you know, this is our findings. This is where we're at right now. You know, you know, can we get this verified and that we're all on the same page? And because, you know, as we're talking about this, this document's really to get everyone on the same page and, and have that total out, uh, outlook of the of your brand and organization before you take the next step and start developing that strategy. 
And so now that you've done the kickoff meeting, you've, you've hosted it with, with the core team um, and you've done the kickoff meeting minutes and you have a transcription of it, you know, the next step is going to be going into building the marketing strategy. And, you know, the, the, the first part of the core of the strategy, and I'm going to let Jacques, you take it from here, is, is really outlining uh, the objectives and, and short and long-term goals. So Jacques, take it away. Yes, yes. So of course, you know, we're trying to uh, come up with a marketing strategy, but why are we doing this? So everybody's different. Uh, and, you know, if I go back to my example about the bios, right, um, somewhere, somehow decided to write this, what was the goal? Why, why did I, you know, uh, write my bio in that sense, which is part of my marketing strategy? So it depends on your business model and, and depends on your goals. So the, the business strategy, the marketing strategy are related and depends what you, uh, what you're trying to achieve, maybe increasing sales, but it could be also increasing awareness uh, about your uh, organization uh, and no sales related really. Um, maybe it's about having more employees. Maybe it's about retention. You know, uh, a lot of uh, companies these days have uh, uh, needs uh, about hiring people, but also keeping them. So, you know, it's, there's a marketing strategy around it just to uh, kind of change the, the way people see your company, maybe increasing the, the number of applications, right, for, you, for your company. But it also could be that you want to sell your business and somehow, somewhere you want to uh, uh, increase the value of your marketing uh, um, or, you know, increasing the, the, the marketing value of your company. So, you know, let's put a, a marketing strategy together. Maybe over the next year or two years, you know, your company is uh, viewed or perceived in a different way. And hence your services are, are perceived in a different way. So it's not only about brand or wellness, but it's, it's about a lot of things. So somebody has got to put that together and look at what are the short terms and long term goals. Um, you know, so the, you know, the short term could be just about, you know, increasing a number of applications, the long term uh, for employees, the long term, the midterm goal could be uh, uh, having more employees and, and the long term goal is having better employees and better retention. So all this has to, you know, after the kickoff meeting, we talked about who's, who's, in, who's in charge. Now let's talk about uh, what are those goals, but also, um, you know, it's, it's quantifying uh, the results uh, or starting to quantify the results uh, that, that you're looking for. So, you know, uh, before we get to, you know, how does that make sense to have that strategy and, 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 and uh, what's my result? You have to know what you're trying to achieve. And sometimes it's numbers, but sometimes it's just not really numbers. It's, it's uh, unrelated to financials. And, uh, and all, that, all those thoughts are coming uh, as part of this uh, um, step in the marketing strategy. Yeah. And Jacques, if I, uh, if I may interrupt, I, I, I like how you put that. And one of the things that um, I think is really important when you're going through this, uh, through the kickoff and, and really defining those things as, as a total uh, team and as an organization is that it's not just uh, uh, data points, but also milestones, certain, yes. certain things that are not fully quantifiable. Yeah. yeah. And, and part of those goals too are timelines. So, um, you know, when I want to, when do I want to have results and when, I, when do I want to have that in place? Because it's an investment, right? You're investing money, you're investing your team, you're investing time. So, you know, all that gets in that uh, part of that uh, goal settings to make sure that, you know, not only you get the results that you want on your in initial investment, but also that, you know, you don't go over the budget, you know, money, time or other things. So, you know, part of this too is, you know, let's define what we're trying to do, but let's define our target. And so, you know, you got to think about what are the segments that you are trying to uh, um, touch. And uh, it can be different, right? A store in town, you know, uh, Peter, Dustin, and I were talking about a store that we are working on as far as strategy yesterday. You know, maybe it's about, you know, uh, reaching out the, the locals, but also maybe touching the, the, the tourists. But that's for a store. But, you know, so what if, you know, it's something different? So you have to work on your persona. And uh, for those who are not familiar with uh, um, the buying persona, but you have to think about who, who is my buyer? And buyer might be uh, uh, somebody, again, applying for a job or somebody buying a product or just somebody, somebody you know, attending a, tra a trade show 
or a conference or, or, or a dinner for a nonprofit. I see a couple of uh, uh, friends here from uh, uh, nonprofits. And so, you know, it's part of your strategy. How do you, who, who is coming? And then from there, you have to cater to uh, what you think their needs are. But, you know, it can be demographic, it can be geographic. Um, depends on the industry too. You know, um, I'm sure um, most of you, are, you know, uh, realize that sometimes you know you you get hit by a marketing ads of sort because um, somehow you were in the target, but you know your neighbor doesn't even know about that product. So somebody somewhere uh, you know looked into those personas, and then for each strategy uh, came up with a, a, a persona, and a, and for those people um, finding a reason to believe what you're telling them. So you can then uh, work for each marketing channels. You can work with the goals and and um, and um, and uh, and the strategy. Great, thank you, Jacques. Yeah. So, and once you know who you're trying to send the message to, you have to really think about well, what message are we sending? What are we trying to say to them? You know, this is probably one of the uh, highest apexes that you have that that is the challenge of creating a good marketing strategy is really getting in uh deep and thinking about like what is our brand message how are we differentiating ourselves from our competitors you know what is the most important message that we are providing people and that is really when we're having that conversation and we're developing things through that kickoff um you know that is part of what comes out is talking about, you know, who are we as an organization and how are we presenting our, um, you know, our business, our nonprofit, you know, to people, you know, so there's, there's a lot of different uh, components to it. And a lot of it has to do with the branding and the, the, the mission, the story of your organization. And, and it's really essential that that step is taken early on to get everybody on the same page because you want everybody to say the same message, essentially. Is, okay. Yep. And I, I like what you're saying about story. Uh, you know, we do a lot of uh, business plans and financial model. You, you are doing a lot of marketing strategy and things like this. But at the end, it's, it's a storytelling exercise, right? None of us have a, have a crystal ball. So, you know, um, when we look at the uh, potential audience, when we look at, at the messaging, you know, we, we're trying to focus on that audience and then create a story that people are going to, people, you know, going to be attached to or, or relate to. And, and uh, so that's, I think, to me, that's the messaging. Something too I want to add uh, is the legal part of things, right? You know, we, part of the messaging is also looking at, you know, how, what can you do and how do you want to do it? On the marketing side, but also on, on on the legal side, and make sure that you know you, your message is actually appropriate. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of different factors into that part, which is why I think it is one of those uh, one of the uh, uh, ch most challenging parts yep. of your marketing strategy. And uh, and you know when we're talking about messaging, I think about it in every sense from from the story all the way down to the direct call to action that you're going to have in your marketing. So, you know, what kind of value proposition are you providing people? You know, what is, you know, what is the differentiator between you and, and a competitor or somebody else who's trying to gain attention the way that you are also trying to provide that? So I think there's, uh, you know, it's sort of a, a non-quantifiable section of your marketing strategy that really has to be well-defined and developed uh, over time before you can really start um, measuring all of your results and really thinking about the tactics uh, of your marketing strategy, because you want everything from a press release that you uh, send out to a social media ad uh, to, to a, a radio spot, to, to anything that you're going to be sending out there um, or have as your foundational marketing, like on your website, uh, they all need to have that, that story, that message. It has to be cohesive and comprehensive. Yeah, I think, as both of you said, it is the most challenging part. And I just kind of want to start in and write, want to start writing headlines. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of where I jump to, but yeah. it's, it's good to more so out, have it outlined. And as you said, because it's going to lead into what your campaigns are and, you know, what, what, you know, how that rollout is going to be. Exactly. When you work on those uh, uh, messaging, do you get into sometimes... Um, 
conflicted messages from your clients even after the the kickoff meeting yes <laughs> yes <laughs> yes and you and you would say yes so how, how do you deal with those things um, um <clears throat> peter i'll let you take this one i think another thing that we run into is not being focused in the messaging so i think that's one way we deal with it is is you know we're always saying what's you know the main what's your main message that you're trying to get across as an organization um and i think that's one way that um it it, it pops up but um oftentimes if, if that's true it's it's really digging further and in, in talking to the individuals we talked to in, in the kickoff meeting and, and kind of um bring it to their attention and 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 talking through it and, and figuring out, you know, really what the message is. Yeah. I'd say it, it actually relates to my favorite question, the kickoff questionnaire, which is if you're basically having a random conversation with somebody at the grocery store and you were talking to them about your business or organization, what's the one thing you'd want them to remember as they walk away? Yes. And I think that alone is, you know, if, if you can define that one thing and it's not a paragraph long, then that's the thing you need to focus on. And that's the message that you need to carry and have everybody know so when they have that interaction at the grocery store that everybody walks away with the same message. And I think it goes back to what we're saying. It's a storytelling exercise and uh, it's, you know, we're sending a message, but that's a, it's, it's a life performance. It's an ever evolving uh, um, uh, process. And so, although at the beginning we have the kickoff meeting and we're trying to get everything in line, somewhere, somehow, at some point, you know, some, somebody realizes, well, that doesn't make sense. And the message gets, you know, uh, uh, changed. And, you know, we see the same thing when we do business plans, you know, it, it's the same, you know, after a month of work, you realize, well, maybe, you, you know, the thoughts initially or the targets is not exactly what I thought it was. And then you have to evolve and, and change that, uh, that strategy. So you make sure that, you know, uh, we're about to talk about indicators of success, you make sure that your success is in line with your goals. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I think you pointed it out. It's, you know, and I'm, uh, you know, part of the, like the reporting and refining that I would, that I'm going to talk about later is that it's really is a living organism, just like a, a, a proper SWAT strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. You know, this is an exercise that is not a one and done thing. It's something that needs to be constantly updated. It needs to be part of a conversation. It's an exercise that should be, you know, it should be like an annual check-in uh, with your, with your organization. Yep. Um, Cause exactly as we're talking right now, uh, when you're outlining your indicators of success, um, some of those things might change. So we're talking about 2022 and really thinking about how we can start, um, you know, start now early here in September to really help get a good foundation, a roadmap to next year. You know, you have to know what your marketing success indicators are going to look like because other than uh, the milestones and your goals, uh, your short-term and long-term goals, of course, there are parts of your marketing strategy that need to be quantifiable. And those quantifiable success indicators that I like to coin um, are, are really, you know, they can come in several different forms, um, in particular when, when we're looking at... Um, the process that we uh, go under is that we measure everything digitally nowadays. So uh, your marketing success indicators should be in line with your business. Um, and marketing indicators really um, provide an idea of, you know, how are people being exposed to or interacting uh, with your, with your uh, marketing tactics. So, you know, uh, a couple of different items that I, I always like to think about is like, you know, what are we trying to achieve here? Who are we trying to um, target? And how are we getting them to, you know, how, how are we getting that message to them? So, um, of course, one of the biggest uh, marketing success indicators is lead generation. So this can come in many different forms, whether it's uh, through people completing a form, um, uh, communicating through email, phone, attending an event, um, you know, these lead generators that provide contact information and start that process on a more um, personal level where you can be proactive. Um, there's, of course, brand awareness. So really uh, focusing on reach impressions and how much exposure to the brand that is actually being provided by these different tactics. And because we live in the digital age, engagement you know, shares, likes, reviews, things from social media or social media adjacent um, online 
uh, uh, software and, and stuff like that. How are people, you know, seeing, contacting, and being engaged by the different uh, materials that you're sending out there? Or how are they receiving the message and what are they doing when they receive it? These are important data points and all of them can be measured online. Um, but, you know, one of the things that I like to uh, uh, think about, of course, is, you know, your business success indicators. So marketing brings you to the door. And then, of course, business yes. success indicators take you that extra step. And Jacques, I think you can speak to that better than <laughs> better than me. Yeah, no, there's, there's uh, uh, more indicators than uh, just the Google hits and, uh, and the, the Instagram likes, which are important these days. You are correct. But, you know, at the end, you know, there's, there's a goal. So that goal can be obviously financial, like you mentioned, um, you know, uh, increasing sales. Sometimes, you know, it's uh, uh, reducing costs through, through the, that kind of a campaign. But also, you know, like uh, we mentioned earlier, it can be uh, human resources uh, related, uh, better retention. So, you know, uh, maybe it's uh, changing the gender of your company and uh, or the, you know, um, social equity part of it. And uh, that becomes an indicator and, and, uh, and, and through a campaign, uh, through a marketing strategy, you know, you, you make some changes. Um, obviously it can be, you know, attendance to an event, you know, or, 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 or a, market, um, a membership drive. So all those indicators are not only the marketing side, you know, with the, the Google hits, but uh, really um, an impact on your organization, profit or non-profit, you know, short or, or long-term goals or results. And they can be mostly they can quantitative, but sometimes they are qualitative. You know, um, changing changing the, the the perception of your company so your brand uh, has more value uh, um, uh, later on. Um, so yeah, no, uh, we we see it all the time with with our clients and uh, uh, trying you know we're trying to open their minds on the results as takes and the success takes uh, different shape. Uh, depending on the focus of that uh, marketing strategy. So how do you, how do you get there? What's your tactic, Dustin? Um, so there's there's a hundred tactics. So that's always the. the yeah, we only part. have fifteen more minutes. Do you I think know. you can do hundred tactics in fifteen <laughs> minutes? Yeah, we all joked. He's like, you've got you've got the toughest slide today. Um, so you know, so what are the tactics that are going to make the biggest impact? Um, really. All of that is defined when you go through your kickoff questionnaire, when you start developing that strategic account plan, like the resources that we provided, it's really defining, you know, where are your people, uh, you know, where are your target audiences, where are your personas, how are you going to uh, reach out to them is here. So there are many different ways to bring your message to them. And, you know, as me and Peter sort of uh, talked about it earlier, we really believe in having a strong focus. You should have a comprehensive message, but you should have a laser focus on what you're trying to develop and then build your strategy from there. Um, you know, so where is your target audience? You know, what, you know, what platform are they using? How are they trying to get in, uh, interacting with you? A lot of this takes a little, a little groundwork to know where they are. Um, but once you find where they are, that is where you want to focus your, your messaging. And there's a lot of different ways to provide it to them. So, you know, overall, there's, you know, some of the different tactics that you can employ. So digital marketing, such as Google advertising, paid searches, both in uh, uh, search display and video can be very effective of getting in lists, getting in front of people to make interactions online. Social media, of course, we live in the age of social media. So both organic and advertising on several different platforms, knowing who where your target audience is in those platforms is essential and knowing if you can target them within those platforms is something that you, um, you will need to know whether it's for uh, recruitment or for sales. Um, SEO marketing, so search engine optimization marketing. So really having that website first kind of ideology, getting yourself into the listings and keeping yourself highly present, uh, uh, pleasing the, uh, uh, algorithm and really keeping your website fresh and open and easy to uh, gain access to. Um, there is, of course, traditional media buying. So the more traditional advertising portion of uh, being in print, radio, broadcast, cable, streaming, uh, or of course, you know, we're in Maine. Uh, everybody loves a good mailer. 
So there's a lot of different ways to reach people on the traditional side. And of course, um, public relations, having media relations, developing those and uh, making newsworthy messages out there for your audience and uh, experiential event uh, based um, marketing. So putting on an event, creating something that has, has retention in, 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 or an organization, something that is an experience that brings people into it. So your, your tactics will highly depend on how you develop, you know, how you answer those questions and really defining where people are to be able to send that message. Because you can put in a lot of money, develop all of these different things, put yourself on everything and stretch yourself thin and not see any of those results. So, you know, when we're talking a lot about budget, we're talking a lot about how to be efficient and appropriate with your marketing. So it's really important to know, you know, who am I, you know, who is that person I'm trying to get in touch with and what do they do every day? Well, how do they receive those messages and really focusing on uh, tackling that precision point and then building the bullseye around that? Absolutely, Dustin. I think the biggest, one of the biggest takeaways I hope people uh, get is, you know, uh, we're talking about tactics. Sometimes less is more some, you know, instead of like you, you said, spreading thin, you know, instead of taking a scattershot approach and, and getting on every single platform and doing every single thing. Um, if you are a smaller organization, oftentimes you're going to, most times you're going to see much better results by focusing in on, on one platform that, you know, your target audience is on and putting your efforts there. So I, I think when people look at, at the, um, the strategy that, that we we've, we've provided, uh, they're going to see you have it outlined with all the different tactics. Um, but you know, think about maybe focusing in on the one that you think is going to be the most effective, yeah. um, and, and, and really building a strategy around that. Don't feel like you have to, you know, sp- spread yourself out on every single tactic you yeah, can we, we got to get ourselves on, on tiktok yeah <laughs> like uh, we we see it too i mean we come from a different angle at opus right because we have a business performance and you know a business management approach but we see it when we work on turnaround situation right a company that's kind of a, been suffering a little bit and we, we're coming up with a new business model and sometimes you find out that they they, they lost themselves trying to do too much and without the focus right so you you know um the f- focusing and being simple is sometimes the better solution. Yeah, ab- absolutely. I think it's, it's that, that 80, 20 rule, you know, that they, they always say. Um, and it, I think it applies with when it comes to marketing tactics as well. Yeah. So you don't think, you don't think that Opus consulting should be on TikTok? You don't see me uh, trying to flip bottles, trying to convince people that I can also <laughs> do it for their uh, business. I know you can. I just don't know if you're going to hit the right person. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So here, you know, uh, talking about uh, reporting and uh, um, uh, refining the business metrics, uh, you know, I think we, we kind of, uh, I don't want to talk too much about this because we only have a few minutes left, but, you know, we, and we also talked, already talked about it. You know, you, you got to track, uh, your metrics for your business, for your organization, for your project, you know, whatever level of the, an organization you are at, you know, you, 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 you got to track. And unfortunately, um, a lot of businesses do not consider tracking um, metrics, financial, non-financial, they don't consider it uh, enough. And, um, you know, if you want to make decisions, you know, of course, you need a strategy. Of course, you need to uh, get the operation going. But if you cannot look back and compare to your your goals and compare to your investment, then then you you're missing something. So here, you know, uh, business performance metrics to track, you know, are, are very generic. Uh, they can be financials, looking at your financials, uh, you know, uh, on a monthly basis, your cash level, your your assets level, your inventory level, your your attendance level, your uh, all those all those things can they can also be uh, uh, um, non financials, you know, employee levels, you know, like we talked about earlier, gender, geographic, um, your your also your, the um, your ratings, you know, how people uh, uh, consider you. We also do uh, um, uh, survey more and more after engagements, 
And you know, it's important to you know get uh, those kind of metrics because that relates to your marketing strategy. You know, you're you 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 you're investing in a strategy, and you want to know that your clients have been happy. So I'm not sure. You know, this is a topic in it on its own. You know, we could I could talk about it for 45 minutes just right there. But um, you know, I encourage everybody to sit down and as part of this marketing pro, uh, strategy uh, uh, process, think about you know what are the business performance metrics that I want to uh, uh, track and then compare and talk to with other professionals or other peers. So, you know, you know, you have a benchmark. And talking about reporting and, and refining, we wanted to kind of, you know, give you some of the tools that you can use. And there's a lot of reporting tools out there. And, and you know, I think what is important is that you have a report that you can send around to the stakeholders, key decision makers, that's concise. Um, and it's not, you know, a bunch of different reports. It's all very concise in, in one report that they can easily scroll through um, and, and, and know what they're looking at. Um, Dustin, I never get the name of the tool that, that we use, but I'll, I'll tell you, it's, 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 it's a great one. It's, is it a Swidu? I yep. believe that's how you say it. Swidu. Um, and what that allows you to do is it's, we can have, you know, the, the Facebook um, analytics in there. We can have Instagram, we can have LinkedIn, we can have Google ads, we can have the website, we can have YouTube. Um, so it's going to put everything in, in one concise place. Um, and, you know, it's definitely worth, it's, it's a very small monthly cost. And, and I recommend that you use a tool like it to, to look at at least once a month and, and, and compare to the previous year. Um, it's, it's very important. And it's something that we do with all our clients. Um, the other free ones out there, you know, and, and these types of tools are going to have APIs that integrate with these and that's where they're going to get their data. But is obviously, you know, the Google analytics, you're going to want to have a, a free Google analytics account. There's, there's so much you can do with that. Uh, Google webmaster tools, um, Dustin and tactics mentioned search engine optimization. So, um, it's a, it's a great, uh, tool for that. Um, we also use Google tag manager, check it out, not necessary, but it kind of helps you organize all these different codes you have out there, like the Google analytics code and, and Facebook pixel. Um, so I think it's just important to, to have one tool that's going to make this all very concise for you that you can track it over time and have very, uh, neat reports. Um, and then also if you have a, a CRM tool, we have our, our, a screenshot there of our CRM tool. Jacques was telling about uh, business performance indicators. You can kind of see things like, you know, what's, how much do you have in the pipeline and what's your conversion rate? Um, and you know, how many opportunities do you have? So, you know, CRM can also be a component uh, um, of this, uh, as well. That can be very useful as far as what metric metrics to track. I think that we find the, the most important metric for, for most organizations is the number of conversions that you have. Um, and a conversion is, is really just an event that takes place. Generally it's, it's online. Um, and it might be someone submitting a form. It might be someone doing a website chat. It might be someone doing a, a tap to call on your website, clicking on an email, uh, purchasing a product. You know, if you can, you want to be able to track that and Google analytics is a great way to, to set up and, and track that. And you can see, you know, really where those conversions are coming from. Um, and you can even put a, a dollar value on them. And I know with all our reports, you know, that's, that's the first thing that that's up there is, you know, what were, were the conversions for the client? So beyond that, I, you know, some of the metrics that, that we're tracking in our reports for clients is engaged users. How many people were, were engaged on, on social media over the month? How many people did we reach not just on social media, but on the other platforms that our clients are on, how many impressions did they get? So how many times did individuals see one of their posts on, or ads on, on a platform frequency. So this is, this is very important. And that's for the number of users that saw an impression, you know, how many times did they actually see one of those posts or ads during the month? Um, followers, you know, how many followers do you have in total? How is that changing every single month on Facebook? That is likes. And then on the website, some of the simple ones is you want to be tracking how many website users you have. Um, what's your bounce rate and bounce rate is 
they go to the website and they leave right away. Um, tracking that number and kind of looking up your industry averages is, is, a, is a good idea because it, it, it will show you if there's a red flag with your website not performing. Um, and then, you know, just another one that we're always tracking is the number of pages per website visit. So is someone just going to the website, going to two pages and leaving, or are they going through 10 pages and then, you know, uh, submitting a form. So it, it's good to know how people are using the website and how it's performing. So those are some of the metrics that, uh, digital marketing metrics that we're, we're tracking for clients. Did I, is you have anything to add to that, Dustin? No, I think that's, that's pretty comprehensive. And I, I, I guess I'll just emphasize is that when we're really looking at these data points, they need to align to your success indicators and they need to be, you know, what you have built as objectives for your marketing yes. strategy. So, you know, it, uh, we have some clients where, um, you know, all they care about is that lead generation. They don't care how many people have seen, you know, they don't care about the impression count. They don't care about X, Y, Z. They only care about the fact if they've got somebody in the tube that they can send off to a salesperson and start that conversation. So it's really important to know, you know, as an organization, what do we really care about? You know, what are the metrics that really matter to us? And, you know, how are we improving that, you know, week over week, month over month, year over year. And these, you know, what matters is going to change because, yeah, uh, a law firm or a CPA firm, they are going to care about that brand awareness, those number of impressions, that frequency, because when someone is ready to switch or looking for their service, they're going to be top of mind versus a local service provider that you just quickly want to get a power washing, uh, you know, done at your house or you want your gutters cleaned or something. That's just a much more uh, shorter. That's a much shorter sales cycle. Yeah. Yep. So, and uh, Jacques put this earlier um, about, you know, that, you know, this is a living organism. This is something that, you know, we're building a foundation for now, but it is something that will eventually need to have adjustment and change uh, just as time goes on, Ooh. as companies change, goals can change, object objectives can change, products can change, services can change. So it's really important to know, you know, that this is not just a one and done exercise. It's something that you have to build out. And, you know, when you're taking a look at 2022, it's really important to, to look over those reports and, and start refining, you know, over, you know, shortly over time is once those campaigns start running, see what's working, see what's not, uh, see, see what's not, and really make those fine adjustments um, and, and allocate your budgets correctly so you can make sure that you're doing it efficiently and appropriately for, for your goals. Um, you know, one of the things that I like to sort of, um, you know, keep in top of mind is that it, it takes time. Yes. All campaigns take time. It, there is no silver bullet. There is no immediate result. It is, a, it is a waiting game on results and you have to take it week, like I said, week by week, month by month to see what's working and what's not. And to improve, the only way is to see how that, um, see how your messaging is landing, how your, how your chosen tactic is, is performing and then start making those uh, adjustments. So it requires a lot of checking back. It, uh, it requires taking a look at, you know, all the, all the finer details and, you know, and might also take extra, extra campaigns or completely changing things uh, along the way. So it has and, to be something that's flexible. And, and to that point too, that's probably when you need to ask, you know, professionals or colleagues or peers to help you, you know, and I know that's why, you know, uh, Peter and Dustin, you are in business, right? Helping people with their marketing strategy. And, and we see it with our clients, you know, uh, you have to, look for advice and, and, uh, and get that marketing strategy, that business plan, you know, uh, always alive and progressing. Absolutely. And there's a reason why, you know, the materials we provided you are in, in Google docs, or if you prefer, you can download it in, in Microsoft word. And that's because these are living and breathing documents. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's better to have them to be easy to change than, you know, a, a beautifully branded, document that's really difficult to change. It's better for it to be uh, a little bit more fluid and, and easy to change that way. Great. Yeah. And everyone I know, Jacques has to, he has to fly out. So Jacques, yes. 
Thank I, you so much. I, I have to get going if I want to uh, get to uh, to my client, you know, got to catch the bus to go to Boston. But, you know, very interesting. Very Thank you very much for everybody for attending. And unfortunately, I've got to I've got to go. But if you got any questions uh, for me, I'm sure you can find me and, and reach out. I'm sure Peter and Dustin can actually also answer most of those questions. And just again, um, that link where all the materials uh, that we, we have for this presentation, ananiabailey.com uh, forward slash roadmap, Jacques contact is there as well. And Peter, this is Tommy again. We've got a couple questions from the, um, the attendees. If you guys are ready to take some questions. Absolutely. I hope they're good questions. And Peter and Dustin, thank you very much. Tommy, thanks for the chamber. Uh, thanks to the chamber and, and uh, all the partners there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jacques. Um, I'll go to the first question real quick. It's from Lucas. Uh, he was talking about Dustin's earlier comments. How would you approach a quote unquote reasonably successful company that does not currently value a digital marketing or branding strategy? Um, you know, all for using a wheel that's already, already been invented, but also recognize the fact that we live in a digital world, feel that companies focused on the old way are really missing out on opportunities to market their company and share the message to their future customers that are more accustomed to a digital society. Mm. I was going to say a very well thought out question. Um, yeah. And, so, and, and just Dustin as a little joke, we'd say, do you have a recruitment problem? Because yeah. <laughs> we can help you with recruitment marketing. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we definitely know. Um, we definitely know that. Um, so, yeah. So I think, you know, what, what I'm really hearing out of that question is, is, is the reluctance to adopt new technology and the, the approach of, you know, how do we change part of that, that system, that ethos that is not willing to change? And I think, you know, when we're talking about, um, when we're, when we're talking about uh, companies that are well-established uh, that need to start changing that rudder, I think just as I put it, you know, this is an exercise. This is um, really sitting down and going over these problems and planning for the future is a constant activity for a business. If they're not concerned about the future, um, there needs to be that discussion of, you know, what are we doing to future proof our, our company? And, you know, when does this, when does it become a, 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 a seal that gets broken? Is it, you know, when we, when we start losing revenue, when we start not achieving, you know, our objectives, you know, do we have it, do we have to have a dip before we future proof, I think is kind of the, the answer to that. And, um, you know, it's really the convincing argument of whether you're inside that com uh, inside of that uh, organization or an external trying to convince them to, um, to, to to future proof. You really need to show the uh, the the risks and show like you know these are the things that are going to be these are things that are going to happen, or maybe even look back at at you know other industries that didn't adopt into uh, into future proofing and now they're not here anymore. So there's a lot of different ways to go about it, but it, that's definitely a tough, it's a tough sell to tell, yeah, uh, to tell a business that, uh, that or, or organization to future proof uh, with new technology if they're not willing to adapt now. And for me, um, it goes to the importance of their brand um, and then also the importance of, of me their messaging and strengthening it. You know, some industries certainly don't need, you know, some industries are, are so busy right now that they don't need advertising, but a lot of them still realize the importance of having a strong brand. Um, and that's, you know, to attract the right type of clients they're trying to get and also to attract employees as well. Um, so that's somewhere that, that we will go to with, with individuals um, that, you know, might not totally get it. Yeah. So maybe a proper brand audit and survey may also help that if, if you can convince them through a branding strategy that they need to change, because the impression is that they are not adapting to technology and that they're old fashioned, that might be a method. Guys, we've got just a couple of other questions here. And I know we just have a few minutes left, but I want to uh, follow up. Ali Gill had a question with regards to what falls into the quote unquote engagement category. Is that likes, comments, saves and shares? Yes. Uh, as a short answer to that, I guess, is, is, is it, it, we're talking about engagement. I would say that 
as a data point, that's all social media. So whatever is considered engagement on a particular platform, so whether it's a retweet or whether it's a like or whether it's, um, uh, you know, I also consider reviews also part of engagement because somebody is interacting with the brand on a digital um, uh, digital platform, all of those I'd, I'd consider as some level of engagement because they are showing maybe not like direct lead generation activity, but they're showing interest. They're showing small, minimal actions from people online. So any and all of those are, I would consider as engagement. Now, the value of engagement, I think really needs to be uh, set down in your in your initial kickoff and say, well, what's really important about engagement for our brand um and and to really track and see like you know as an industry too you know what what does get engagement you know is it a very is it a very engaging industry you know like food is a very engaging industry versus you know manufacturing not nearly as as uh uh as engaging on social as the latter so i I think it yep i was just gonna say an engagement can be a great thing you know to retarget to individuals on on social media, you know, we're yeah. targeting people who were engaged. Um, it, it's, it's something, you know, someone who watched 30 seconds of a video, you know, creating an audience that way, and then, you know, remarketing to them, um, especially in the, in the wake of iOS, uh, is it 14.5 does you know, the exact number 14.5.1, yep. um, you know, being able to, <laughs> to, uh, remarket to individuals on Facebook and Instagram who have engaged with your content as becoming, uh, it's very valuable. Yeah. Well, this has been a great conversation. We got one last question that we're going to try to slip in here before we conclude. Um, it again, comes from Lucas. He's asking if we could briefly touch on whether you feel it's important to consider the psychology of color in your digital marketing strategy, logo, content, marketing material, slide deck, et cetera. It seems like over the last five to 10 years, many companies have migrated their logos to showcase subtle shades of blues and greens. Uh, quite the observation, Peter, you want to take a crack at it? Um, and he's, I think he's referring to sort of like in the branding section, kind of going through the color palettes more so than uh, how the strategy actually looks. Um, I think it really depends on the size of your organization and, and where you are at. I think for people who are just starting out, that's going to be very overwhelming. Um, but for some of the larger organizations that we work with, that would uh, definitely be in our, um, what we call strategic account plan, which is the, the marketing strategy. So I think it, it is well worth uh, going into, into those, those nuances. Yeah. And, and I would say that there is, um, I would say that it plays a role, but I, I would, I would definitely say that you should not build your entire brand off of, um, off of a psychological profile of color. <laughs> so I, I'd say that it, it should play a factor, but it should not be the leading factor. Well, again, great, uh, great content, you guys. Thanks for answering a few of these questions. And again, thanks to Peter, Dustin, and Jacques, and Nate for another great presentation for today's event. Um, just a quick reminder that today's presentation has been recorded. It will be available for replay on the Chamber's website and YouTube page. Uh, additional details and resources will be included in the post event email that you will all receive today. Uh, just a quick plug for some other upcoming chamber events, mark your calendars for Tuesday, September 28th for Propel's annual ignition awards. This in-person event will be held at DeMillo's on the water. On Thursday, October 7th, Eggs and Issues is back again with a panel discussion on the housing situation in the Portland region. Thank you again for another great uh, episode of, event, of Eaton Peabody's Growth Basics for Business and for attending today. Uh, we look forward to seeing you at Growth Basics in October for a discussion on cybersecurity with our partners and friends over at ACS. Have a wonderful day and enjoy the rest of your week. Dustin, if you're still there, uh, hang, hang tight for a second. I think maybe Peter might have logged off. Yeah, I see. I can't. I was going to say something with my leave button. I think they're going to, you guys are going to have to kick me. That's okay. I, I just wanted to chat with you real quick, but I'm going to let all the rest of the uh, participants file out of here. It looks like we have just a couple left. All right. Maybe, maybe Dan can either end their okay, session. Peter.
Peter's actually right here too, so I can. Oh, is he? Okay. Yep. <laughs> Excellent. Hello. Great job, guys. Too soon. <laughs> I, I think it's just down to just the four of us here. I think Morgan and Dan might still be logged in, but um, if I failed to mention yesterday, we will send out a post event email today. If you guys are okay with it, we will include um, links and access to um, your contact.